we're going to do this step by step. For the, so the first one, that negative, right in front of the 3, don't, don't include it with the 3. That is a reflection over the x-axis, a vertical reflection. X axis, okay? And then that three, the three right there, that is a vertical stretch by a factor of three. And now we go down below and we got that 0 0.5. Guys, that 0 0.5, that is a vertical compression. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it's a vertical stretch. It's a vertical stretch because it does the opposite. When it's less than 1 underneath, it's a vertical stretch. When it's greater than 1, it's a compression. It does just the opposite, so I, I misspoke. So 0 0.5 is going to be a horizontal stretch. And this is like, 0 0.5 is like 1 half. So what happens is that it takes that four, that horizontal shift, this is a horizontal shift, and what it does, you gotta take four and divide by 0 0.5. And so it doubles it, it doubles it. So this is gonna shift eight. This is gonna shift eight. Anybody got the Desmos graphing calculator out? When you put this function in, that's what's gonna happen. That's what's gonna happen. So when I, I put this in to the Desmos calculator, you can see it reflected over the x-axis. And then it, it was a vertical stretch, but then it shifted almost 8. It shifted almost 8 to the left. Okay? All right. Let's, uh, let's close that again and do the next one. All right, number 3. Number 3. This time it's h of x. And this time we're looking at that, that exponential function, that exponential function. And so we got to look what's going on up in the exponent. So there's nothing in front. There's absolutely nothing in front. So there's no vertical reflection. There's no vertical stretch. But we got something going on horizontally. That 2 in the numerator, that 2 in the numerator, when this is greater than 1, it's a horizontal compression. And that's by a factor of 2. So what happens to this, this negative 1? This is going to be a shift, a horizontal shift, that 1. This is a horizontal shift. But what happens, we're compressing this. So we got to divide by 2. So we're actually shifting it 1 half. This is a horizontal shift, 1 half. And then that 3, guys, is a vertical shift up. OK? Make sense? So let's put, let's put that function into Desmos and see what we got here. So there you can see the vertical shift up 3 and the, uh, the shift right on our function. Now, if it asked us for the x-intercept or y-intercept, there's no x-intercept here. But our y-intercept, we can look right here in the graph, and that's 0, 3.5. So we can take that information off the graph when we're analyzing these. All right, number 5. Case of x equals 1 third. Well, that 1 third. That's less than 1. This is a vertical compression. And then we go inside. This 1 half inside, guys, that's just a base. That 1 half inside the parentheses, that doesn't do anything to the graph. This is less than 1, so we know that this is decay. That's all you need to know. This is a, a decreasing function. So, so this doesn't do anything transformationally to our parent function. This is the parent function. So I can think of this as my parent function is y equals 1 half to the x. That's kind of a parent Mac Daddy function. OK? So we got to go to the next thing. And there's nothing next to that x. 
we don't have a horizontal compression or a horizontal stretch there. And it's not being reflected over the y-axis. We don't have a negative. So now we can go right to that seven. And that seven, guys, this is going to be a horizontal shift. This is going to be a horizontal shift. And if we put that in the Desmos calculator, so now when I put this function into the Desmos calculator, you can see that it's a shift to the left. And that shift to the left is seven. And then we have an asymptote, we have a horizontal asymptote at x or at y equals zero. Um, so that's what it looks like. And we don't have an, an x-intercept, but we do have a y-intercept. We should have a y-intercept, and it's going to be really, really, really close to zero. So that's our y-intercept. It happens where x is zero. All right, let's look at this next one. Again, we don't have anything in the numerator as far as uh, a vertical reflection or a vertical stretch or compression. But we do have something in the denominator here. This first negative, this first negative is going to be a horizontal reflection over the uh, y-axis. And then that three, that three is going to be, is because it's greater than one, it's going to be a horizontal compression. by a factor of three or, or one third, or one third. And then that negative seven, well that's a horizontal shift. That's a horizontal shift. But what's gonna happen is that because of this is a compression, it's gonna shift it negative seven divided by three, which is gonna be like uh, a negative 2.33 repeating. So let's look at Desmos. All right, when I put this in the graph, you can see that it's, uh, it's reflected over the y-axis and that it's shifted left here, like more than two, more than two to the left, because on this side it's almost uh, 2.5. So like 2.33 is what that shift was. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, now we're looking at g sub x, and we've got that first little piece, that, that, that negative, well, this is a vertical reflection. And that's over the x-axis. And then that three, that next one, this is a vertical stretch. This is a vertical stretch by a factor of three. And then we've got nothing going on here there's no real shift um, horizontally here there's no horizontal compression there's no reflection so now let's go to the let's go to this four well this four we know that this is a vertical shift up that's it that's it let's put it in the Desmos calculator all right, so when we put this into the Desmos graphing calculator, you can see the reflection, the horizontal reflection over the y-axis. That's what that negative does right there. If I take it away, watch what happens. It flips right back. So that is a reflection over the x-axis, and then that shift up 4 is going to be uh, y. It, it's not sitting right at the x-axis. Now, if I took that 4 away, we got right, we're right at the x-axis. So when I spoke the reflection over the x-axis, it looked a little confusing, but here you can see it. And when I add that four up back, we're gonna shift up vertically four times, four, four units. All right. All right, let's look at number six. Okay, this first one out front, this one half. Guys, this is a vertical compression because it's less than one. So it's gonna squish it, it's gonna squish it vertically. And then this one half right here, the next one, this one half, guys, this is just the base. This doesn't do anything. This is just, the, we know because this is net less than one, we know that this exponential function and we know it's decreasing. We know that this is decay. And so now I look over the next piece and right here is that negative one or that negative, I should say. That negative, guys, is a horizontal reflection over the y-axis.
and then we go to that that 0 0.5 well this is less than 1 so this is a horizontal stretch and because this is one half this is like a, a stretch by 2 by a factor of 2 All right so what does that do to this horizontal shift this 6 is going to be a shift it's going to be a horizontal shift but, but because we're stretching by 2 Guys, this is going to be a shift of 12. This is going to be a shift of 12. And then the last one is that negative 2. That negative 2, well, this is a vertical shift. Down 2. Down 2. Okay, so let's put this in the Desmos graphing calculator. All right, so when we put this in the Desmos graphing calculator, you can see that this has been, a, been shifted to the left. And it's been shifted to the left, it's been shifted down two. Because when I take that two away, what, look what happens. It puts it right on the x-axis. So I'm going to put that back. I'm going to take that down two. And this stretch here, when I take this away, notice it moves left. And this is a, this is a stretch by a factor of two. So i got to get it back in there. So you, you play with this, and if I take that 0 0.5 away and I make it 1.5, then it's a compression. Then it's a compression. So you can see how much it, it, it changed that horizontal um, shape. So it squished it horizontally, but when I take that away, it's going to stretch it again. When I take that 1 away, it's going to stretch it back. And then this negative here, this negative is going to flip it over the y-axis. Watch what happens. See how it flipped over the y-axis? When I add it back, it's going gonna, it's gonna to flip it back. So guys, play with this. You can see what these functions do or what these components do to the function, I should say. All right, so this is the uh, page one of the review. Okay, let's look at number seven. So we've got a graph of g of x, and our parent function is going to be f of x equals 2x. So I'm going to just put that right in here. So f of x equals, I'm going to give myself some space, 2 to the x. Okay, so now let's see what the first thing it's asking us to do. So by vertically compressing by a factor of 0 0.75, well, 0 0.75 is going to be out front if it's a vertical compression. And then a horizontal reflection over the y-axis, well, I know that that's going to be a negative in front of my x up there. And then translating it three units right. Three units right. Well, three units right, we're going to subtract three because it does the opposite in our exponents. And then we're going to shift it eight units downward. So eight units downward is going to be minus eight. So that's it. That's each of those. So horizontal reflecting is my negative. And then translating three units right is that negative three. And then eight units downward is that eight. Is that eight.